Hey guys, Reed Work Turbo. Um, today we have got a Buick TE. It's like a 60 because it's a P trim turbine. 60 1 compressor wheel. This one was sent in because of oil smoke. And as you can see, we have total bearing failure on exhaust side, thrust motion, and compressor side. So Let's dig into it and look a little bit, see what we can find. A little bit of history on the TE60. Two T sixty one T sixty two. All right, so the T E sixty uses a sixty one compressor wheel and a T O four E compressor cover. The T E sixty uses a stage three or fifty seven millimeter turbine wheel. Uh, the sixty one uses a sixty nine trim or a sixty two millimeter exducer, and the sixty two uses a P trim or sixty five millimeter exducer. The Largest of this with the 65 millimeter P trim is what I ran on my personal car for many, many years. That turbo effortlessly made over 700 foot pounds of torque at the tire on a little V6 and pushed my full weight Buick on regular old street tires to a 701 to the eighth. Actually, I lied, 707 to the eighth right at 100 miles an hour and I did it on only 16 pounds of boost. It was one of my favorite street turbos. I'm, I'm on a video. We'll get done here in just a second. <clears throat> Let me pause this. I'll be right back with y'all guys. Sorry about that. Customers come in the door. We gotta take care of them. <laughs> Anyway, like I was saying, one of my favorite street turbos. It's it's. Do I want to use the word antiquated technology? Um, obviously, it is old technology because it's been around since the uh, late '80s, early '90s. But that gum sure works. And I officially said "dag gum" on a video. Great adjectives for uh, explaining how awesome this turbo is. We can still be, build these units. Actually, I'm going <laughs> to have the ability to build about a hundred of them right now. So, if you need a Buick 60-1 turbocharger, hit me up. And definitely, uh, as expected, tons and tons of oil in this guy. which when you have bearing play measured in literally a half an inch. <laughs> not, not gonna not gonna find anything good inside of this, I'm afraid. Loosen the compressor up. This unit was rebuilt by another shop, not by us. 
first thing I'm noticing here is the surface finish of the turbine wheel is definitely not not to my standards anyway all right we get turbos sent to us all the time for evaluation and rebuilds and when something fails relatively quickly, we want to obviously make as, as a full effort as possible to make sure we're giving the customer their, you know, the whole story of the turbo. What we'll do after we get this taken apart is we'll evaluate the remaining bearing surfaces and see where we're at. But definitely not so far for how much trauma we've got on the unit. Not necessarily what I expected to see opening it up with the shaft like that. So this is the unloaded side of the thrust of the coast side. Definitely see contaminant embedded into the into the bearing itself. These bearings are made out of a, um, a centered steel material, so they embed very easily. So we've got abrasive all through here. This is a new bearing housing, and we'll note that. Sorry about that. What we got is some hardware that is uh, not real happy on coming out, but we'll get it. When all else fails, grab some vice grips, right? Monday morning. So some non-standard tools are always a, uh, a necessity. I know a lot of these disassembly videos may be super boring to me, but if y'all guys are enjoying them, please let me know. Cause of failure. Not a lot of shops out there put videos of things coming apart and show you why they tore up or why they broke or why they're having issues. So something I'm trying to do is set myself apart a little bit.
Hmm, this is very strange that we have, uh, you can see here on the thrust pads, I'm, I'm learning this camera, so y'all bear with me. Got some small material touch off, but this side we definitely have contaminant embedded in it, but a contaminant could be, hmm, we're not going to speculate, we're going we're gonna to look, because... Here we have very clean oil. We have some. That thrust washer is literally mint. Let's pull a journal bearing out of this guy. OD on the journal bearing is very, very nice. Bearing housing still shows cross hatching marks in it. It may not be translating onto camera very well, but the bearing housing, no signs of contaminant there. Pull the exhaust side journal bearing out. A couple of scratches on it, but nothing, nothing bad. Huh. All right. So I'm going to back up just a little bit. Let's pull this guy here. We have, and I don't know if this is translating onto camera, but I have contaminant in here that is shiny and sparkly. Sparkly. Another word I didn't think I'd use on camera. There is not a lot of it, so I'm not terribly alarmed, but we have some grit that appears to be glass bead. It's obvious that this back plate has been bead blasted. But I've got it all out of these screw holes. You can see it on the tip of my finger. If I can get the camera to focus, let's see here. Those are definitely glass beads. Now it could have came out of these screw holes when the unit was tightened up or when I loosened it. That's the that's actually where it would have to come from because glass beads don't readily stick to the surface of a relatively clean component. Um, I am gonna go and look at the ends of these bolts a little closer. Loctite. Oh yeah. We got glass beads on the bottom of the bolt. So I think that's a little bit of a false alarm on contaminant in the turbo. Um, now, I'm not saying some couldn't have gotten down in there. Obviously it is in this pocket area, which is inside the oil, but it is not a large amount. So I'm not saying that it has anything to do with the wear on this bearing. What the wear on this bearing most likely is from is the amount of shaft movement in the turbine side as the as the bearing wears the shaft articulated like this and that's going to put a lot of of trauma on that bearing itself so i'm going to go with that being the primary cause of of that wear but the embedded material that is that is embedded down inside of it is going to be a uh, most likely from just it shearing the the lubrication side so, other noteworthy 
I don't have any balance correction or registration on this wheel. Just the factory balance marks. And I looked before I removed it, there is no um, alignment marks. You can even see the glass beads here on the compressor wheel on my finger again. Hmm. Unfortunately, I'm going to put the cause of failure on this guy as to an improperly prepped turbine shaft. Um, I've also got some concerns that this shaft was glass beaded. You see these, these grooves? And then you have a shiny spot over here where the bearing actually wore. These grooves were in the shaft before this turbo went together. They were glass beaded over, so the bearing clearances were incorrect. I mean, this is obvious that this has wear to it. And we keep this within one-tenth of one-thousandth on our blueprint clearance. And that easily would exceed any bearing. Um, so our cause of failure on this turbo is going to be improper shaft preparation, improper bearing clearance. And uh, that, that alone is enough to validate the type of failure that it had. So... Um, I don't see any other reason, even if the balance was off, if the balance was off terribly bad, it would have metal swapped between the, the bearing and the shaft. But basically what this did is that abrasive action from the shaft. I mean, this is how much material we have missing. There are no marks on these bearings to know if it was a standard bearing or an undersize or oversize or who made it. So, but basically it is, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's supposed to be right at, give or take, uh, three thousandths of an inch. Front compressor side, same way. Alrighty guys, well that is the uh, conclusion on this video. If you found this content inform informative or entertaining, please leave me a comment below and do all the things everything YouTube wants you to do. Hit that subscribe button as everybody says. Or, or don't, doesn't really matter. Hit the like button or don't. Doesn't matter to me. I'm just here to show you cool turbo parts. Y'all have a good day.